Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have a special guest with us, Mark Longnecker. Thank you for joining us, man. Thank for those you, who don't know, Mark owns Endless Summer Tattoo in Cocoa Beach, Florida. And we're super happy to have you here with us, man. I'm honored to be here. I'm so stoked. I got, when I got that, I got a text that you guys were interested in having me. I was all about it. Yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of my friends, like I'll be like, oh, where do you guest shop or guest spot? What shops do you go to? Your name came up a lot. Which is cool, man. You know, especially, you know, obviously when people you like, friends are like, oh, hey, yo, I go to his shop, I guest spot, I have a good time. I'm like, oh, that's good news, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all about it. Any excuse to come to Cocoa Beach is a good yeah. excuse. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, for a long time I even had a guest artist apartment attached to my shop. That's cool. I'm really taking care of the guest artists, and I think I was getting a little bit taken advantage of at, at times, like... <laughs> So I can just I can just go stay in Cocoa Beach for free, right, and, right, right. I'm charging and stuff, and I started eventually. I be, I didn't call it the guest artist apartment. I called it the tattoo artist cheat on their wives apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so I did, didn't really want to encourage too much of that. I like the name; it just rolls <laughs> off the yeah. tongue. Because <laughs> they'd show up with their wife on the first guest spot, and then they'd show up with the girlfriend on the second guest spot. Yeah, side ridiculous. chick on the third. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely uh, brings a lot of people um, when you have more to offer as far as a, a guest artist uh, accommodations. Yeah, we, we've we actually thought about doing that here because we have all these, you know, apartments above and stuff. But I always liked that concept, you know, especially when guests come and it sounds the same for you. I really like to treat them like a guest, mm -hmm. you know, like, hey, let me take care of you in this way or whatever way I can. That makes sense, you know, like. Bring your wife, bring your other girlfriend, whatever. We got you, you know? Because um, I've definitely been to shops where maybe I I didn't feel welcome or like a guest or sometimes there's just that that vibe. You, you know what I mean? Sometimes you walk into a shop and everyone's like scared to talk to you or like too cool and you kind of spend the whole trip not interacting. Have you had that experience? Oh, yeah. I did one in Vegas and it was like, um, like, I uh, had to wait for the person to stop tattooing, and they were like, give me a, a look, like, you know, yeah. I'll be done when I'm done, and then I was like, well, I got an appointment, and yeah. then there's another person waiting when when I was done, like, it's pretty crazy, but um, but yeah, when I when I bring people, I really offer them the Cocoa Beach experience, I try to take them paddle boarding. That's cool. We always make videos of them paddle boarding, like, through this, like, mangrove tunnel of, like, trails. Yeah. Like, you have to get really low on the paddle board to get through, and I'll be filming them, and or take them surfing if there's waves. And so that I really try to give them a Cocoa Beach experience. Nice. And I, I that stuff matters, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Every time we've gone anywhere and, like, the owner or even fellow artists take time to do something, even if it's, like, one night at dinner, I feel like it makes all the difference. All right. Let alone, like, taking them out on the water, mm -hmm. you know, doing paddle boarding, whatever. Yeah. I thought we were cool for taking ours to like top golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nothing beats Lahal, dude. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going top golf tonight. Is that what I hear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cam said he's paying, so I'm I'm stoked about it. <laughs> and how long you had the shop? I opened up around 2003. Yeah. 2004. Um, officially opened by, like, I started driving back and forth from Fort Lauderdale here to Cocoa Beach. I was working on the uh, weekends at uh, Bruce Bart Tattoo, and then during the week I was opening my shop, and um, it took, took a while to get everything going, and I had no money. Yeah. I remember asking, uh, trying to get loans, and even asking my parents for money, and they laughed, and they're <laughs> like, sounds like you shouldn't be opening a shop if you don't have money. They're like, money for what? A tattoo <laughs> shop? Yeah, and they're like, you need to go back and save up your money. I was like, no, this needs to happen now. Yeah. And um, but I, I made it work with credit cards. And, you know, and that's that's the, a hard part in the beginning is um, banks aren't going to give you money if, if, if you don't have a business, a successful business to show that's making money. Yeah. You know, now that I have a 10, over 10 year business, that's what they look for, you know. But, um, uh, yeah, I was driving back and forth Fort Lauderdale, getting that drive down in like less than two hours sometimes, and uh, and I got it open, and I worked se seven days a week, living in the back of the shop. Like I said, I had that apartment, and 
uh, I was able to save my money and get more people in there and um, build up to what it is today. That's cool, man. It was really cool. That yeah. was, so originally that was like a little beach cottage, and it was a freestanding building, and I loved it. Um, and we, so we had, you know, uh, people could pull their RVs up, and people could put tents in the back. Yeah. We could have events and, and put tents out front and lots of parking. Uh, but I never owned that building, so about uh, five years ago, I ended up buying a building actually in downtown. Nice. And now it's got more foot traffic, and you, everyone can see it. So the location moved? Mm -hmm. Cool. It's only only about a block and a half difference, but it makes all the difference in the world because everyone's walking around the area that I'm in. Yeah, really nobody's walking by unless there are like some drunk dudes that were walking to the gas station to buy some beer from the beach, and uh, those weren't always the best walk-ins. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone like hey, a walk-in's a walk-in, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I see, like now I see like people park to use the, to go to the beach, and there's like girls changing, getting in their bikinis right in the front of the shop all the time, and there's a strip club across the street. Watch the sunset over it every night. It's oh. beautiful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's <Heck> perfect. Yeah. <laughs> right. What I always wanted in my life. Nice, man. I always respect the the grind, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I can definitely relate to that. And, like, you know, seeing anyone or hearing about anyone, like, doing whatever it takes to, to get what they want is cool. You know, and it's it sounds like you went through that, you oh, yeah. know, so that's badass. Um, yeah, seven days a week living in yeah. the back like that's th when you're not paying rent at your place, then you can actually save up. I was able to put down money on a house, cool. and buy a house. That was like one of the smartest things I did when I got to Koga Beach. Yeah. And then that built up equity and then I was able to buy a better house. Right. And buy my shop. And it's like people people don't understand like all that work that went into it and all that time, blood, sweat and tears. I just think like. That I, I maybe I came from money. Like I had no money. I had no friends. I didn't know anybody. You know, people want to try to use that against me and be like, I think I'm rich or something. But uh, everything I did, I, I made on my own. It's all self made, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously, tattooers are usually good with money. So it's no surprise. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. And, and we talk about that here a lot. Like all the things you just said. Um, not only like making good investments, but like saving money, getting credit, getting business credit, like all those th things are important. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about you, but majority of, you know, uh, our early years in tattooing, there was none of that. Yeah, it's all cash only. Yeah, it was like Big getting paid, spending, yeah. getting uh, paid, <laughs> spending. <laughs> and you got to understand that if you're cash only and you're not showing that cash, then yeah. no, no one's going to give you any money. No bank's right. going to give you a loan. Right. You could have... You could have made hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you can't prove it. Then, then the Means government. Yeah. At this point, you had opened the new shop or your own shop, right? right. And then you're out of debt. Mm -hmm. Things are working. You've proven you can do it. I mean, that had to be a good feeling. Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, Start, started uh, getting employees and then getting the headache of actually owning a business that, that <laughs> has more than just me running it. Yeah, because when I think when you open a business, you expect to have like. Uh, I'm going to have like 10 versions of me and uh, it's going to be perfect, right? Right. <laughs> but it's not, you know, you can't clone yourself. You you can try to make like an apprentice like you, which is always fun. But, uh, but you never have all these different personalities and it's like herding cats, right? It's yeah. Like, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah. I think it's harder <laughs> with the tattoo industry. I just pictured myself running <laughs> around with, <laughs> with cats. <laughs> How many artists do you have now? Uh, we have eight stations. Got five. Five, six, <laughs> six artists right now. Nice. It's a solid number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think the ideal number of tattooers in a shop is? Like eight to ten, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like good to have like everyone like a specific style. Yeah. yeah, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. I feel like there's so many different styles now that there's almost like more people who do different things. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good to have that where everyone's vibing off each other. And oh, yeah. And I like the open area, you know, like you guys got. Like yeah. this, this is like what it is now. Like in the old days when you'd have individual rooms or cut off partitions. Oh, I hate like the yeah, yeah. like the booth style. I think individual rooms is the worst thing you can do for a tattoo shop. And I know that was like kind of cool and everyone has their own private room. And yeah. But um, that's kind of taking away from the interaction and yeah. the growth, I, I believe. Dude, like, I love to see, like, clients interact with each other and, like, just all four of everyone who up here is, like, able to have one conversation, you yeah. know, I think. That's the way my shop is. Yeah. It's the way it keeps to go. the vibe going. Yeah, 100%. And I think it loosens up, like, the clients, too. I think it 
it almost yeah. like makes it a little less serious for them, a little less uptight, yeah. you know. Like we're all in this together. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's like super cool. Yeah, it raises the energy. Yeah, because I've been tattooed like in both ways, like in like a little like booth and then like in an open area. And I'd much prefer like an open area. Yeah, sometimes I don't want to be like stuck in a room with my client alone. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, sometimes like your coworkers, everyone tattooing around you is like your escape from your client sometimes. Yeah. Or sometimes it takes the pressure off the client from like talking or like yeah. making conversation that they really don't want to. Mm -hmm. Like if you're just kind of chatting it up with the boys or whatever. Exactly. So you've been tattooing a long time. Mm -hmm. How long? I'm getting close to 30 years. Oh, <sighs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah. So I, I guess I, I graduated high school in 91, college in 95, and shortly started tattooing right after that. After college? Mm -hmm. What did you go to college for? Graphic design. Okay. Then the College nice. of Art and Design. Yeah. And I was doing a lot of t-shirt design. And, um, that caught the eye of one of my friend's uh, parents who they like uh, were lived in Key West, and they ran Margaritaville, and they also did all the uh, t-shirts for Jimmy Buffett. Cool. And they were looking for something new because all their shirts kind of had that kind of old-school, hand-drawn look, and I had, like, Photoshop under my belt. I was learning like Photoshop one back in those days. And yeah, Damn. like I remember even <laughs> pe people like who graduated. Uh, but when I got there, the people who graduated were coming back to learn Photoshop because they weren't getting jobs because they needed to learn Photoshop. And I was learning it. And I was excited, and um, but I was doing like making a lot of uh, T-shirts and selling them at raves and stuff like that back in the day and or different events and. Uh, one of my friends wore his my shirt back to Key West, and I caught the eye of, of his parents, and they're like, well, who's making these cool shirts? And he's like, my friend, Mark. And so I set up an interview and got the job to go to Key West. Nice. And uh, so I was drawing stuff like Jimmy Buffett-style designs. And, um, you know, in the beginning, I was like, this is epic. I get to go to Key West. But I also wasn't a huge Jimmy Buffett fan. <laughs> and I was like, you know, kind of a skate skater punk rock and and i was into that kind of like i like skateboard art and i i couldn't see how i could do both then i realized you can you know yeah and um i can make it i can make it my own uh i think that's really what birthed my style because I, I i kind of fought it and i just like well i'm getting i, I get, get to work for jimmy buffett this is a big name but I don't really want to draw another parrot drinking a margarita. Uh, <laughs> uh, Just about to say, I'm on, sick of these parrots, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in a hammock on the beach or something. Right. And now I love doing that kind of stuff. And of course you're not going to do it if you don't love it, right? right? So then I had to, like, make myself love it. Uh, I, kept, I told myself that. Like, if I, if I keep fighting this, I'm not going to do good art. If I accept it and, and learn, well, like really, like, learn about it and see what this big craze is about, why are people so attracted to this Jimmy Buffett guy and what he's talking about? Because I don't really know much more than Cheeseburger in Paradise and right. those typical <laughs> songs. And then what really got me uh, into him was when I realized what a true gangster he really is, right? Like, this guy is OG. Like, and I'm at the time, I'm listening, to, back in those days, I'm listening to gangster rap and stuff, and I'm like, these are the gangsters, you know, like uh, Ice Cube and all these people. And then once I got into the stories and, and, like, hung out with some of the people, like, there's dudes that are on Jimmy Buffett's payroll that live down there that just get to lived down there and and drink and and party and and uh because they were like in his little gang that would like run drugs and stuff gotcha and they like did time so and they never ratted him out he never did went to jail and um so, and so they're just taken care of for life and i was like well the, the story's getting more interesting now yeah you know and um and like and then i found out like the like the lost shaker of salt that's in, in in this song is full of coke and stuff and I was like, okay, like, it all makes sense. Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the girl stole the sh salt shaker off the off the table, and uh, and like then you hear the songs he's singing about a seaplane and, and low flying uh, plane where he has another song called Treetop Flyer because he learned to fly ha really low to avoid the radar, and one of his planes is actually in Orlando, um, and has bolt holes in it. Damn. Stick your fingers in the bullet holes, you know. And then I was Why like, isn't that on the t-shirts, man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why did no one ever explain this to me? <laughs> so now, now it gets more exciting, right? Now, yeah. now you almost want to listen to a Jimmy Buffett song. And then I, once I did start listening to him, I was like listening to the words, and he's telling his stories, and he's he's not this amazing singer with his 
great vocal talent. He's an awesome storyteller. Yeah. And uh, so I got really into it. And um, and then my artwork showed. And like now I can, now I can express it through the artwork and my love of tropical uh, style. It almost made me feel like the same kind of a uh, journey that I went on because Jimmy Buffett wasn't born in Jamaica or one of these tropical islands or Key West, you know. I think he was like an Alabama guy who came down and really loved it. So I'm a New Jersey guy. Came down, you know, I was like, when I, you know, when I grew up, like thinking about a palm tree, like living with a palm tree, that's like, that's like vacation, that's paradise, yeah. right? And um, so that I felt like I really related to his story and, and I was able to put that into my artwork and show my love for living in the tropics and, and the beach life. And, you know, I was diving a lot. So then I started drawing a lot of the underwater stuff and, you know, get into Guy Harvey and Wyland and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And, and then, and like I said, and I don't have to do it like Guy Harvey. I can put my spin on it. I can do the more punk rock skateboard art style into that artwork, you know. Right. And then you can translate it into tattoos and then it becomes what I call today, trappy style. Right. And trappy style meaning your style of tattooing. Yeah. Right? And then so if you have to... It's not, I don't really uh, just try to make it my style. I really want to make it a, a all-around style. Um, when I, I coined the phrase trappy style when I was on Ink Master. Right, I, I did I feel that. like I... Uh, so once I said it on TV, like now it's official, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think everyone, anyone's ever said the word trappy style. And uh, so now it's officially called a style. And then I also started a Instagram page, Trappy Style Tattoos. Nice. Now on this page, uh, I'd say ninety percent of the people that are on there and the people that follow it have no idea that I even run it because I don't use it to promote me and my Trappy Style. I want to show that it is more than just me, and it's this worldwide thing. And there's artists from all over the world that are doing this kind of stuff that really love Trappy Style and, and the tropical imagery and the tattoos. And so I never showcase myself. I let people do takeovers. Yeah. They'll ask me, who is who is this? Who am I talking to? And I don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm cool. Like, I'm like, do you think you know? Can you guess? I'm like, they <laughs> right. don't know. Because I have people from Australia, yeah, yeah. people from Hawaii, all over. And so it really is, a, you know, a thing, and a, a style. And it's like, it could be arguable. It's not really a style. It's just tropical imagery. Like, you can do it in a neo trad style. You can do it in a traditional style. You can do it in more of a Japanese style. But I think if you look at the page, you'll see it, it is its actual own style. And it, if you live in a tropical place like Florida, like I think it should be added to the contest. Yeah. And um, yeah. In like the Orlando show or the or the Miami show, like it should have a tropical choppy style category. Yeah. yeah. From like what I've seen, it's got like a not like a specific color palette, but like more colors that are used. Like there's a lot of like like sunsetty colors, you know, oceany colors. Yeah, like it's, it's very it's like definitely very bright. Yeah. You know. What I, the way I originally described it is, like, because I also l put a lot of love and, and time into learning Japanese and how that works and the backgrounds and especially the background formulas. And uh, so I used the idea of, like, a Japanese sleeve instead of a koi fish and, you know, a hanya mask. It would be, you know, a uh, shark, an octopus or a sea turtle. And, but you still kind of use the finger waves. You can still use some of the uh, coin clouds and mm -hmm. wind swirls and stuff. And that's like my perception of the way that I try to do trappy style, but it goes beyond that. Like kind of incorporating some of those in the background mm -hmm. and then using tropical images in the forefront. Yeah. Nice. So it's funny. Uh, so I proposed that idea to the guy who taught me that a lot of the Japanese. Yeah. And I was, uh, so I went from uh, Key West to Miami and I was working, um, tattoos by Lou. Yeah. And, uh, also, you know, that was associated with Ken Cameron's shop. And my, so my friend was at Ken Cameron's, and he was doing a full back piece on me, and he was sick. He was, like, basically, like, uh, Ken had mentored him and showed him all the Japanese tricks. And and um, so I would just hang out with him all the time and want to watercolor with him and try to – and I would bring him all my drawings, and he would help me figure it out, especially the background and – uh and then when I was getting my back piece, I'd I'd bring out like my week's worth of drawings. So I'm like, can you help me with this? Help me with this. And, and so we got pretty close. And I proposed that idea to him at one point after he did my back piece. And we were, and I'd always have to like bring a bottle of sake to to paint with him. And yeah. I think we were like a bottle of sake in. That was like uh, what I had to have to do to, to learn from him. And I was like, this is my new idea. I wanna I wanna go back to my roots of tropical stuff. 
and I'll incorporate that in here. And he's like, I didn't show you all this, this, this Japanese tradition, just for you to fuck it up, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're I good now. That, but I, I, drop, I drop enough bomb on this needle, right? Like <laughs> oh, he, yeah. he, he get, yeah, yeah, emphasis. He was, emphasis yeah, yeah, he was mad. And, um, and he's, like, uh, he's like, you know, cause, and I understand that. There's a respect uh, for it. And if you do it, you do it right, right? You don't change it. But people have changed it, and that's evolution, you know? Like, um, I see all sorts of people, like, putting their spin on Japanese, and it's cool. Yeah. And, you know, and, we're, and we're, I'm not Japanese. I'm here in America, and we're doing our version. And um, so he actually got pretty upset that I was going to, uh, like, go off on my own path with this, what he, he taught me. And, uh, and I'm glad I did, you know, because I feel yeah. like that set me apart. Yeah, I was going to ask. That, I mean, it makes sense that you said that. Um, ask, like, if there was some blowback from, like, changing the style. Because a lot of the Japanese traditional Japanese guys I've met, it's just like, this is the style. Follow the rules, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then, but, yeah, you change it up, and, and you're right. Like, things do evolve. The only way we get new styles is if people try. Um, a lot of, in a lot of areas, people sticking to tradition – not all the time, but sometimes, like, aren't letting natural growth occur. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he took it, He took the Japanese stuff super seriously, and I still do. Yeah. And there's so many, that's, like, one, some of the main people I follow, and, and I really respect them, and I love doing just straight-up Japanese tattoos. Like, I put a lot of uh, love into it and passion, and I read up on all the deities, and I'm really into it. Um, but I'm also into doing my own thing, and, right. and that's, like you said, I feel like like it goes with even like I'm a yoga teacher, right? And there's a lot of very strict yogas and uh and they want you to, to follow they want some of them want you to just teach the same thing every day. And I'm like, oh, well, that's going to get boring after a while. Like yeah. I can't I, I, my mind doesn't function like that. And uh I did meet somebody who says, "I'm going to teach you this style and then you're going to add on and you're going to change it and I want to see you in a year and I want to see what you've done with it." Cool. And he was very encouraging and it's like it's the same thing. I see a lot of crossover from what I learned in the yoga world to uh, the tattooing. It's pretty crazy. Like what? Just um, like, like, so when I went on my yoga journey, it's like you're starting, I'm starting all over again, learning something new, just like an apprenticeship in tattooing, right? I'm going in this whole new world, and it's just like, so the, the, the yoga traditions are, are go, go trace way back to India and this is like, so there's Ashtanga yoga, there's the hot yoga, the Bikram yoga you might have heard of or seen around here. Like these are some of these, they've been doing the same uh, poses in the same order for for thousands of years, you know. Like and while teaching it, you mean? This is the way they teach it. Okay, yeah. Same they want you to teach gotcha. it like that. And um, it's, like a, it's like a foundation. Uh, so I, I went to a, a um, so we had just had a bunch of yoga teachers uh, they just graduated from my, my, where I teach and they all got to teach, uh, at my, at my, uh, yoga studio. And I went to a couple of them and one, two of them were like really badass, And then one of them, the girl kind of struggled and I could tell she wanted to like impress and, and do all these crazy moves. And, and all I kept thinking is like, why don't you just stick with the foundation? Like, I know you were taught the foundation if you went through this training, same thing with tattooing, right? Like, if you don't learn the foundation of tattooing, if you just go into the, some crazy style without ever learning how to outline, right? Like, without learning the basics, then you're not gonna uh, excel. And like, there's there's a foundation of of ways to teach yoga, and then you build off of that. There's a foundation of laying down a good solid outline of a tattoo, and then where to shade off the line from there, and then and then learning from there. So I just see crossovers in the industries all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And if you if you try to showboat and like be too crazy in the beginning, then you're not, and you, and you didn't really do your homework and learn all the, the basics, you're not going to excel. Right. You ever done a yoga cam? No, I haven't. Never. Mm -mm. Have you? Yeah, you should actually. You should I've it heard it's very good for you. I just haven't like gotten around to. I'm like open to it. I just haven't gotten around to doing it really. I didn't start trying anything like that until uh, I was like in physical pain. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like my uh, lower that, back that's started to hurt. Stuff like that. You sometimes. Yeah, that's the the great thing about it is is people, 
you know, the, even the word yoga is usually going to scare most people. Like, oh, this this weird woo woo thing. Like, I'd rather go if I'm going to do it. I'm going to go. I'll go to CrossFit or I'll go to the gym or I'm not. I'll do something that's going to put some muscle in my body and make me look good. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do this crazy, girly yoga thing, uh, which is you know a one perception that maybe might be in the, especially in the tattoo industry, I'm very masculine. Like, I don't want to do yoga, right? But um, I think. Uh, if, if you get injured, then you're like, well, or, uh, most people I, I, I hear say, it hurts, I should do yoga, I know it helped my back. And, and especially, what are we doing all day? We're bending forward, right? Well, we're, we're leaning, we're hunched days, over, right? Yeah. It's called tech neck, a lot of people on their computers get it too. And um, so we need to, if you bend forward all the time, you need to counter that. You gotta bend backwards, you know? Right. And, you got, and if you do that every day, you're gonna be able to, to uh, have a good back and work on your spine. And do the, you know, I use the ergonomic chair, which supports me. I yeah, did yeah. want to see that. Your your chair is cool. I like how it's like the elbow mm-hmm. place to rest your elbows. Yeah, so too. I'm not using my, my lower back to hold myself up. I'm, I'm, I'm being supported with my arms and everything. And Is it the same as that one? No, it's, his chair is really cool. It's got like an arm. Those have that. Yeah, is, that, really? is that an ink bed? Yeah. Yeah, then he, oh. he just took the, the oh, elbow yeah. one. I just off. haven't ever seen the arms in those. Yeah, so... Shut the fuck Jeez. up. <laughs> <laughs> All of those are broken. Every single one we I have know. in the shop. <laughs> Yo, he came on strong. He's like, I'm right. I'm going to argue with John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Yeah, no, I saw some videos of you doing that, and we were talking about that. Yeah. I was like, yo, I need my elbows supported. Yeah. You know, yeah, we were talking about last week. I like to, I, re- I rest mine on my knees so that I can do that. Yeah, Bro, you're, you're tattooing you're upside bringing, down. You're literally made of rubber. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I feel care. like I'm always bringing my knees up a lot if I don't yeah, have that chair yeah. and stuff, and to like, rest the elbows on. Yeah. yeah. I remember Kyle Dunbar said, he's like, if I could just make some some elbow lengtheners, I would I'd like have them, <laughs> yeah. where you could have like a different adjustment. Or like strings from the ceiling that <laughs> just like <laughs> held. <laughs> like just weight reducers. Anything, dude. Yeah, like a ventriloquist or something up there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Pup- the puppet tier. The other way around. <laughs> <laughs> That's Man, good. Man. That's good. I like Until that. You try it. Bro, you got to protect your back. Hell yeah, yeah, man. That's right. So important. If you want a long, lengthy tattoo <laughs> career, you got to think about your back. Yeah. And that's what I, I, I teach yoga at all the tattoo conventions, too. Nice. And I get into that, and that's usually what I open with. Like, uh, what, what's the, the hashtag um, uh, crooked lines uh, or crooked spines? Oh, per- crooked spine, crooked lines, something no, like that. Perfect lines, or <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like basi- Dr. Seuss. <laughs> it's basically that you're bragging clean, li- that, that clean lines, that crooked spines. Yeah, or something clean like lines, that. crooked yeah. spines. So you're bragging that you're gonna you're gonna sacrifice your back for this for this perfect tattoo, right. which is like so fun to say, right? In your first five years of tattooing, <laughs> ten years of tattooing. <laughs> yeah, when it doesn't hurt, <laughs> you're like, oh look, I'm doing it, you know. <laughs> but um, but you don't have to do that. You just need to take care of your back, and uh, yeah. and. Like if you if you do yoga Makes every sense. day before before you do a long session like that and I I can go I uh, six seven hours ten hours uh, of tattooing all the time, and um and, and people are like oh, I can only go a couple hours I can't even look at the same thing for that long, I really get focused so I feel like yoga teaches me to stay focused and stay in the moment and 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 really and work on that tattoo, it f- teaches me what to do with my my breathing teaches me what to do with my back. Like you're in for this long haul on this tattoo, and it's a long journey, and uh, and um, and yoga's really helped me. So I just teach it at every tattoo convention. I'm in the gym, and, and usually it starts off on a Friday with a few people. And by Sunday, the word's out, and they all know the gym I'm teaching it at, or sometimes, like Health City, I actually teach it on the floor nice. for everybody. Like, of course, Derb's going to – he's all about it. Right. You know, because he kind of teaches some of that stuff too. And cool. How to how to keep your back good for a tattoo artist? And yeah, and he's a jujitsu guy. Like it's not a hard sell to t- on a jujitsu person to hey you got to stretch like such a spiritual form of like MMA. Mm-hmm. It's like super well, spiritual. They, they, uh, every jujitsu starts with like ten minute stretch, mm-hmm. so they already they're already into it. And yeah. they're, most they're already so flexible too. Like when jujitsu people come into my yoga classes, they're good. Yeah, <laughs> and the other dude that's always really good is that guy Alec Azam. Ever seen that dude? No. He's always at the Villain Arch shows, so he's like contortionist. Okay, okay. Yeah, so he gets super involved with the yoga? Well, yeah, he, if he knows I'm doing it, he'll be there, and That's I'll be cool. like, like, look at this guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he like pulls himself master through level. A, yeah. <laughs> he can like pull himself through a racquetball racket on stage yeah, and stuff, wild. and do all these crazy moves. So yeah, yeah, he's fun to have. Have this like double jointed contortionist in your class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always wondered how people like that figured out they were good. Like maybe I should do this. Like something <laughs> happens in life, yeah. and they're like, eh, I might have a career in this. Yeah. Figure yeah, out I can go through a racket net or something. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm double jointed everywhere. <laughs> so college, apprenticeship, move down here, or you did the apprenticeship down here? Did the apprenticeship in Key West. Key West. Mm-hmm. You said you bounced around South Florida a little bit, move up to Coco, open the shop, mm-hmm. start hiring employees. Mm-hmm. At what point did you start getting involved with the show? Was that way later? With Inkbester? Yeah. So... Um, so I started, uh, uh, seeing that, that, like that, the buildup of that probably at the tattoo conventions, um, the Ink like Master advertising Row. it. Oh, okay. Like, Ink Master Row. Yeah. And, uh, so, um, thinking, I remember like just getting so mad originally, like about the show. About the row being oh like the row being like yeah. the most most popular row yeah. like everyone's just only like, I'm not even about. gonna walk down this fucking row <laughs> you couldn't you could barely walk and it's like it's yeah. like it's like that there's the happening bar that you can't get a drink at and here's like tumbleweeds blowing down my row and it's like and I'm like I was just so mad I was like you know I put all, all this time and my dedicated my life to tattooing and these guys that may have maybe have tattooed half the time as me that happen to be on TV are getting all the attention and people are buying their shirts and. I was like, you know, I was just feeling all this negative energy. Yeah, you're like, I worked seven days a week. I was <laughs> tattooing the drunk bums. I did it all. And then, so those are kind of awakening moments. Um, yeah. And you have to the, you have to keep looking at those times that you get mad and, and you become that guy. And, and you would never want to become that guy, right? Every time. So now I, I, I feel like I sound like that guy that I heard that was like, yeah, these tattoo magazines, they're, they're ruining the tattoo industry, right? Oh, the yeah. internet ruined the tattoo industry. Uh, you know, it's like there's always something that the older guy is uh, complaining about this newer thing that, he, yeah. that he's not keeping up with. So I was like, it's like, why am I getting so mad about uh, these Ink Master people? Or And at that time, it was more the other shows. There was like Tattoo Titans and Best Ink, and they were all on the same row together. And uh, But they just called it Ink Master Row. But um, so that kind of motivated me. I was like, well, if this is what you need to do to succeed and, and get your name out there and get the people over to your booth... I can sit here and hate on it, or I can I can get after it. Was that a pretty immediate transition, or it took a little bit for that idea to no, it to kind of clicked. Cool, because I knew I started sounding negative, and I I try not to be that negative guy. And know? how long were you tattooing at this point when this was happening? This idea, uh, twenty years. Yeah, mm. and um, because that was a big change for the industry, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and everyone's hating on it, and, and especially all the tat- older school tattoo artists were hating on it. In the beginning, and I just didn't want to be one of those haters. You know, you got to kind of embrace it and, like, look at the judges, and these guys are the same age as me. They've done the same amount of time. And um, and then, you know, the more people, the more respectable people that they bring on, it's like, all right, maybe you hate it on the first season, but then they brought so-and-so. Like, I know you got, I know you like so-and-so. And then right. and then this guy came, and then they had this guest judge that you respect. And it's like, so they're bringing in more and more people. And it's like, uh, they're, they're, they have Chris Nunez, who I tattooed with in Miami, you know, probably in some of the same shops. You have Oliver Peck, who's definitely made a name for himself and, and, and grinded and done the work and tattooed all of Warp Tour and, and, and you know, built his name up. And um, he's hustled his whole life. And he, I think these guys deserve it. And I, I kind of was excited to see guys that I feel like are on my level, which is hard, too, because then I'm getting judged by guys on my level, you know. Yeah. Almost kind of did want to be judged by, like, the Jack Rudy's or the people that were had more experience than right. me. Um, but I also relate to them so much, and I like I'm like I can understand what, what half their what they're saying a lot, but it, um, yeah. So I I started seeing uh, that you can get on Ink Master by going to some. They had a thing in Miami actually, a little tryout, right? And all these tattooers were there. I was like lined up. Oh wow! And it's like they look like they're getting ready to go for a job interview, and they got their tattoo portfolio. <laughs> and what seasons were out at that point? I think it was like they were shooting. Shoot, they were trying to find season three. Okay. At this point. So it was we're still early in the show. Yeah. Yeah. And they were advertising that you could come and, and possibly get on the show and make it through these tryouts. So I showed up in this long line, and I know half the people in the line from the tattoo convention circuit right. and stuff. And I'm standing there with my surfboard that I painted. 
Yeah. And they're like, why would you bring that? And I was like, so I can look different from all you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, when you saw people, like, in the line, was it very much like, hey, like, cool, like, you're trying this too? Or was there any, like, em- embarrassment or, like, feeling like, oh, like, I'm, you know, coming into this when I used to talk shit about it? Like, what was the vibe of, like, seeing other uh, tattooers I'm, there? I'm sure it was, the, it was probably all the same people that were talking shit about it just yeah, a week, a week yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. well, maybe I need to get on this thing. Right. Fuck that, I'd never go, and then they're there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you're in the line, you show the surfboard. Mm-hmm. How'd it go? Um, they were definitely interested, and um, and I even said, I was like, you never had, like, a surfer dude uh, on your show yet. I've never seen, like, a surfer zend out yoga tattoo artist on TV, and uh, and uh, I, I'd be your guy. Like, yeah. let's do this. And I got, I got pretty good with that. They, they kept interviewing me, and they brought more people in, and then they... Continued that on with like Zoom interviews and stuff, and then uh, so there's a lot of build up to yeah, it. It's yeah, like a, it's like a huge process. Like just oh, yeah. to get on the show alone, they said my my season that eighty thousand tattoo artists applied. <sighs> so like you win like and then you're down to twenty. So yeah. if you're twenty out of eighty thousand, you're a winner just to get on the yeah, show. You yeah, you already feel like a winner. Yeah. yeah, even though you do feel pretty bad if you get kicked off first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never want to be that kicked off. That girl's killing first. it. She's still rocking her Ink Master Banner and and she and she's riding it. All the way to the end, and, and, and she loves it. And it did help her career. Is this so. referring to someone that get kicked off first? Yeah, the girl okay. that got kicked off my first yeah, yeah. <laughs> my season. But, um, so, yeah, that process was a lot and, and a, a build up. And then they just finally said, you know, we picked everyone for the season. You didn't make the cut, but we're really interested in you. And maybe we can find the right season for you. And I was like, all right, I, I, that's the old Hollywood. Don't call us. We'll call you. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to call me again. So I gave up on the idea. I think I didn't try again for the next season. And then it was season five where they switched it up. Now they've done four seasons. They're all the same. Now they're going to change the theme. And it's going to be Ink Master Rivals. And uh, so now they're, you have to go against somebody in the industry, call them out, talk shit about them. And um, so then they, they already had their heart set on this guy, Ryan Eternal. Like Good-looking guy, looks like a badass. It's like, um, it's like Built like a brick shit house. Like they put him in a leather vest to make him even look more like <laughs> nice. a biker and stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know? emphasize that. Yeah, and uh, and they're like, who you want to go against? And uh, he's like, Mark Longnecker would be my first choice. And they're like, okay. perfect. We've been looking for the time that we can bring him in. Did you guys know each other prior to the show? Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah, because we had, I mean, the rivalry that we talk about on the show is is real stuff. Gotcha. You know, it's built off of real feelings. Yeah. We didn't really, like, want to kill each other. Right. And they, but we we had to dig up some of those emotions from when we did hate each other. Right. To play off of that. And uh, so going into the show, you guys already had this rival, rivalry going. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was really just, well, like, a beef about a a, um, a contest where he judged, and I got mad. <laughs> and I, f- I felt like somebody from his shop won, and I... I thought that I should have won. Kind oh, of like thing. favoritism yeah. shit that we see all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, That's wild. I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if, if like I kind of had to go back to that every time like, and think about that, like, go to back to that feeling when they wanted me to be mad at him, you know? Right. So it's hard. For, like, I don't stay mad at people anyway. Right. Even, like, my worst enemies are, like, I barely can hold a grudge for, like, two weeks. So, uh, so I did have to keep, like, uh, playing off of that and going back to those emotions, and that's like heavily encouraged by like the show. Oh yeah, like people that people are uh, like even my own like the photos and promo photos. They're like, how come like every photo I've ever seen of you, you're smiling like that big cheesy mm. big grill, and like and it's like you're like you're so mad. Like uh, even s- one of the promo photos are like, who can make their neck veins stick out? And I was like working out a lot at the time. I was like, I can, I can do yeah. it. <laughs> and, uh, I got to be the guy that had my neck veins come out and, like, another guy coming at me. And yeah, so it was always, like, it was never, like, especially those first seasons, like, we couldn't joke. Um, we, could, we couldn't laugh. We couldn't. It was very, you just, they just wanted you to talk shit and, be, and hate on each other and, right. and keep that, that rivalry going. Was that what you expected going into the show? Um, or what did, what did you expect? I don't know. I mean, I really tried to do my homework and uh, I tried to, Talk to many as many people as possible to get my head ready for it. Had you known people that had been on the show? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. So I asked all of them, and um, you know, I, I was, I I asked them like how they prepared their heads and 
what to, what to be ready for. So I thought I had a good idea of what was going to happen, and um, I wasn't prepared at all. It was the most stressful thing I ever did in my, comp- my entire life. Did they give you accurate advice, and then it just... Yeah, and even the two guys on my season were helping me, like, because they had already been there, and they're like, look, we already went through a season, like, this is what you're going to need to do, and they were giving me advice. They're like, it's rough. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, <laughs> Hang I honestly in there. feel like, so there's the control room, right, where yeah. all the magic happens, and I feel like, so the, and then there they can listen to everything. There's uh, microphones in every room. You're always mic'd up half the time anyway. If you're not mic'd up, they can hear you. That's tough. It's usually a cameraman running around from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. But they, they know what's going on. If they're listening to your phone calls, they have a room where you can, um, they want you to go in to go like uh, talk to your wife on Skype. Uh, yeah. Then they're really going to know what's going on. So I didn't want, really want to get into all that because I would see somebody would go talk to their wife and then they would come back upset. Oh, my, my kid's in the hospital. All right. And then the next next time you got to talk to him, like you have to bring that up, you know, or you have to, oh, your wife's getting ready to leave you. I heard you might be losing your house. Like all these things are happening. Like, and you're, <laughs> cause you're gone for th- yeah. three months and bad stuff happens. Like in the real yeah. world, you know, yeah. and if they can, if they can use that and bring that in, um, then they do, they, they do. Yeah. So I didn't, that's I tried, to, I tried to keep my blinders on, um, and not like I really was, uh, focusing on the competition and, uh, but I feel like there's somebody in the control room that's like a paid like psychiatrist or psychologist or somebody who's like, how are we going to make these people snap? Yeah. And then I felt like I was focused on a lot because because I wouldn't snap and I was really like I was the zen out surfer dude, right? So there, that was their goal all season yeah. was to get you to snap. Yeah. So if, like if we can get make the guy who screams every episode and throws a chair uh, do it again, who cares? But if we can make this guy. Yeah, scream and go punch somebody or choke them out, then that's TV gold, right? Mm -hmm. So I felt like then I became that person that they really wanted to to make snap. Did you realize that soon into shooting the show? Like, oh, they're they're gunning for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm the one. (laughs) You're like, great. I mean, they put me in the bottom every single episode almost. Yeah. It was crazy. But I watched it, yeah. You watched the whole season? I felt like I watched enough to like get the vibe, but at the same time, like I'm I'm watching this and I I'm assuming like this isn't you or like anyone I'm seeing like it's this exaggerated version. Yeah, I yeah. went you back know? and pretty much rewatched the show after our uh, episode with Tyler, yeah. and it kind of gave me like a different perspective on the host show. So I feel like I kind of like view it differently than the average person would, because I already know all of it's like a facade, and. uh that had to be tough, though. I would go nuts if some if I had no privacy like that. Mm-hmm. Like, one day I'd That's be like, they want. fuck they this. They want yeah. you to snap. Yeah. So there, everything's being messed with. Your sleep's being messed with. Your food's being sl- messed with. I think Tyler said all that. Yeah. Um, like So that, that was, like, one of the first things they asked me. So I'm vegetarian now. but um, So if I was vegetarian, if I would have said that, of course, they would have been feeding me meat the whole time. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't. I was actually paleo. I'd be like I hate cheeseburgers. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually paleo at that time, and so they didn't understand, or I felt what it felt like they didn't understand. But they just finally said, "So what don't you eat?" Which was the trap, right? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, we're. I, I know we're filming in New Jersey. I don't want to sit here and eat subs and pizza all day. I can't eat all the carbs. I want to focus on fruits, vegetables, and protein. And um, and they're like, okay. So, like, well, first day of filming is a long day, and uh, everyone's, like, upset and wondering when we get to eat, and, uh, and they're getting cranky, and, and finally, they pull me aside, Mark, uh, it's a good time for you to probably eat while all this other stuff's going on, and they put me in a room, and it's all subs. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? You know, and I'm talking to the mic, I was like, I, n- I told you not to give me subs. And it's just, you know, so many subs, and it's not that many. And uh, I was like, whatever, and I eat all the meat out of the subs. That's the only thing I can eat. And then they sent in another crew of, of dudes, and they're like, what the fuck? We're eating uh, bread sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do this? To us? We're, we're supposed to survive off of bread sandwiches, and they're all ar- we're arguing. I'm like, this is what they gave me, blah, blah. Hold on. we got to shoot another scene. And then we go, like, out on the couch, and... Uh, they're like, they're ready, bring them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they watch so, it, like, from another room. <laughs> yeah, they're like, so, so, all right, so let's talk about how Mark's tattooed suck. Go. And, uh, cause, so now everyone hates me from the eating the meat, right? So uh, That's that's smart. Yeah. 
First off, Evil fucking genius. bread sandwiches <laughs> taste like shit. Yeah. Like, there's lettuce and tomato on there, homie. It's yeah. <laughs> like a salad right there. <laughs> I need to tell you about Allegory's new Ultra Black. This stuff is dark, maybe even darker than my childhood. It is amazing for lining, shading, and even blackouts. And I know a thing or two about black and out. You got to check this stuff out on AllegoryInc.com. Use discount code UNEMPLOYABLE for 20% off. Again, go to allegoryinc.com, check out their new Ultra Black, and use discount code UNEMPLOYABLE for 20% off. That's that's rough. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like when you, especially that last segment you explained, it's like, yeah. All right, now they're mad at you. Now, you know, mm-hmm. judge a tattoo. Yeah. Uh, that, like I, I eventually I asked Clean. Um, and I always like looked up to him. I knew of Clean from his first big hit of success in his earlier part of his career. I really looked up to him, so I was excited to see him on the show with me and competing against me. And uh, but I really respected his opinion. And eventually, I, I said to him, and I, I could hear him being interviewed. Sometimes we'd be getting, getting interviewed together. So the interview process—that's a whole day. Yeah. And that's when. So when they when they cut to you, to somebody like talking about narrating a scene, like oh blah blah blah, if, if this client doesn't do this or this. We have to talk about everything that happened, all of us. And then they have all that footage. They can go to me talking about it. They can go to Clean talking about it or anybody. And they want to have an, uh, ver- different versions of it. So you have to talk about how bad that person is or how good they are or how bad the situation is. And uh, and I just told them up front, I was like, I can't tell you a tattoo is bad if I don't believe it's bad. I can't tell you yeah. it's good if I don't believe it's good. And they're like, come on, Like Mark, telling the producers. Yeah. yeah. And they do it every interview. Like, come on, just tell me something bad about it. <laughs> You know, and I'm like, no, this is a clean tattoo. Can't say anything bad about it. Right. right. And then, uh, but clean, on the other hand, so I finally asked him, I said, and I can hear him, like, screaming in the other room, and he gets really hyped up in the interviews. And So, of course, they're going to use a lot of the stuff that he's saying. Yeah. Which is very animated, and he's great for TV. And uh, he says, uh, I said, do you, when they ask you if my tattoo sucked and you don't like it, do you tell them it sucked? He goes, bro, who fucking cares? TV's not real. I tell them whatever they want to hear. I'm like, well, not my career is real, right? Yeah. Like, like, either you, are you going to say what you believe or not? And he goes, no, I just tell them whatever they want me to say. And I, and I give, give them, like, both sides. And right. I'm like, well, I can't believe you're saying all that stuff. And I got so mad. And then they, uh, they're they like, so who's going to go against clean? No one's going to go against clean. And it, and it was hard. Like, he's very witty. He's very sharp. Yeah. Like, he's going to have a better comeback to anything you say at all times, right? He's just got them all like in the back of his head. He's been saving him his whole life, <laughs> and uh, and and his tattoos back it up, right? His yeah. tattoos are are awesome. Solid. So like, what can you really say to him? But now I got something mad about. So uh, they put me in the room with him, and I I kind of start saying that I said, you know, I, uh, I I liked your opinion, but I'm not going to listen to you anymore. I'm not going to I'm not going to let you affect my mood and, and the way that I. Tattoo, and I'm going back to the way it was before I got on the show and trying to focus on my tattoos and not letting all this other stuff get into my head. And I'm like, you're near just a self absorbed piece of shit, asshole person. Yeah. So, something to those lines. And um, they're like, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah. we got it. Like somebody, yeah. somebody talk shit to the big dog. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and then, uh, so they, 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 in the actual show, I think he, he probably had some good comebacks. And, um, and they, they may have shown that, but in the commercials, like, building up to watching it, like, next on Ink Master, they'll show me, like, saying that. And then there's a whole other uh, scene that's not even, it's, like, two episodes later where, uh, where he wins and he gets himself into the finale. Right. And this is a big moment, right? He, uh, and it's emotional. Like, and I, I didn't really want to cry. I kind of made that uh, promise to myself, like, don't get too emotional yeah. on, on the show. Um, I don't want to be known for like crying on the show, and, and I, he didn't either. Like he's a tough guy. Yeah. And uh, but it, this is a big moment. Like they're like, all right, clean, you're in. You're 100 percent going to the finale. All the, these other three guys got to battle it out, Mark uh, and and them. And uh, so, what do you think, clean? And he's like kind of choked up, and he's like, I can see he's kind of doesn't want to talk because he might get emotional. Yeah. And I keep trying to get something out. I'm trying to get something out of him. He won't talk. In the meantime, me and Clean are super close. Like, we're waking up early, we're doing working out, we're going to the gym, we're doing yoga, we're, we're painting all night. They know we're best friends. And they're like, all right, 
let's have Mark talk to him. And they would use me a lot because I was really good friends with all these people. Right. Right. So they put me in a room with him by himself again and uh, happened to be wearing the same clothes from that other uh. conversation. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he says, uh, they're like, I asked him about his, his dad. His, his dad's, in, uh, I didn't know his dad's on, like, in the hospital. Right. Ask him about his kids and how that's going to make them feel. So I was like, you know, this is so great. You made it. All this hard work. You're, you're going to be in the finale. Uh, how are your kids going to feel? And he's like, immediately starts crying. He's like, you know, I, I made my machines and I wrote Do It For The Kids and I inscribed it on the bottom of my machines. And he's like, they're going to be so proud. And I'm going to show them if you want to work for something, you can do it. And he's like, he's like, Growing down and yeah, cr- like crying yeah. on my shoulder, and I was like, "What about your dad?" And he's like, "Oh, it gets even more emotional." You yeah. Know? yeah. And then, um, so they then, would like prep you and be like, "Okay, yeah. go talk to Clean." Yeah. And like, did Clean know that like if, if you went into a scene and you didn't get prepped, you know that they're coming after you? Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got gotcha, you. Like gotcha. they're leaving you like in the blue. <laughs> but like, but by this conversation, like you guys have been on the show for a little bit, so you kind of understand how everything's working. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so anyway, now they have these two scenes. They have me calling him <laughs> a piece of shit, and then they have him crying. And so then next, oh, uh, next on Geek Master, they cut me, to, you know, uh, calling him a piece of shit. And yeah, the self-absorbed <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> 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 oh, those bastards! They did the wo- wardrobe thing with you too. They forced you to wear certain stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I got pretty lucky. You were on that tank one. top, so yep, easy. I was tank top guy. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I guess uh, Tyler got to be tank top guy after that. Yeah, yeah. but um, there's been a tank top guy every season mm-hmm. since. You. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so there's like wife beater guy and tank top guy. He clean was wife beater guy. Yeah, I was tank top guy. I re- always like to wear hats. I didn't get to wear a hat because there's already a hat beard guy. Mm. So <laughs> I was kind of upset about that, uh, but um. But, yeah, my wardrobe wasn't too far off from what I wear. It was always – I really wear more, like, surf trunks. They always had me, like, a like a pair of, like, shorts, like, actual shorts, and then flip-flops all the time. Yeah. So I didn't mind. You're and comfortable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was freezing a lot uh, uh, yeah. on, on set. But that also worked out for the outside. We'd go outside. And dudes, like, the dude that had to wear the bow tie and the pants and the, and the – Suspenders and all that. He was like sweating because you have to stay in character even outside. Yeah, and I would thrive outside. All the a lot of the outside challenges I, I would win. Like I painted with pig's blood out in a, out in a barn, mm-hmm. which I don't really like. Right, uh, but but I won. Everyone's complaining it's it's hot. Painted uh, headphones with clean. We both won. We got to have our headphones uh, made by Monster. Oh yeah, uh, headphones. So and overall, the Ink Master like uh, I I did good. Like, the, uh, the idea is to make it to the end, right? right. And I, I, you don't want to go home in the first episode. Right. I'm in every single episode, so that's what I feel is an achievement, you know? Right, you maximize the results on the show. Mm-hmm. Made, I made it to the end, and, I, and when, the, when the dude who barely beat me into the, uh, into the finale actually won, that's when I really realized. I was like, I can't believe I actually could have won this thing. Yeah, yeah. But he, so the dude who beat me, and it looks like he's not going to beat me. If you watch... And they don't. They want you on the edge of your seat every episode, right? right. Like at the end, like don't send him home. Uh, so they're not. So when he, when he beat me, and he came from it was Jason Claydon. He was already in uh, the season before, and they got paid to come back, right? So they had this kind of feeling like we're we're going to be in the finale, and they're not going to pay us to come back right. just to kick us off right. after a couple episodes. And so it came down to me and him, and. Uh, and they were like, we, we want these birds. We want some dynamic birds. And they, um, they even came over and like, why don't you put it in flight or bring it, put its wings out? And I did what they t- they wanted. And then they nitpicked some feathers. And his was just like little bird on this guy's like older skin with some blown out lines. And and um, so if you look, if I if I just show you those two tattoos, like, which I actually did, I like put them side by side, and I was hanging out with him on his birthday, and we went to some bars. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Which one?" And like the people that remember the episode are like, "Oh, that one's the winner." Like, yeah. I'm like, "No, but, uh, if you didn't, but if you've never seen it, like, which one would you pick?" You know, like, so a lot of and he, he's like, "Why are you being a sore loser?" And I'm like, "You, you won a hundred thousand dollars. Let me have my moment." Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me just have tonight. Yeah, like, I'm not asking for money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. So yeah, he 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 beat me and he got into the finale and I didn't think he's gonna win. I thought for sure Clean was gonna win, and I think all of America thought Clean was gonna win. Mm-hmm. But you can't give it to the person you're gonna think's gonna win because then you can bring 
that's part of Ink Master's I was, strategy. I think they knew he was coming back for yeah, sure. Yeah, you get to bring him back. Yeah. yeah. He gets to try again. He gets to try again. And, and he ended up becoming the most ever aired tattoo artist on, on, on Tattoo TV. He got back Clean. so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I said, he's perfect for it. He's very entertaining. Right. He's funny. He's like witty. He's a good tattoo artist. Mm-hmm. And do you think that, like, after leaving the show, were you like, I'm happy I did this? Yeah. Yeah. Even though, you know, there were some rough moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not exactly happy about some of the ways I was portrayed. And, um, you know, uh, I felt like could, because I was able to, to take critiques and I was able to take these, like, uh, bad beatings of my. What, t- talking about my tattoos and I wasn't always like this is a bad tattoo because your lines suck or because you're a bad tattoo artist it's a lot of the times it's because I'm not hitting the challenge you know I'm dealing with this crazy canvas because we don't yeah. have clients uh, who is told to come out and argue with you right we heard about ridiculous. that like, yeah. I feel like they ran out of those kind of people like eventually like all of everyone in New Jersey wised up like so uh, I probably can't go out there and argue and get all this camera time and get the award-winning tattoo. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. it doesn't yeah. take a genius to figure that right. out. But those first, those first five, six, seven seasons, they were still doing it. Yeah. yeah, I remember I finally watched somebody come out and they're like, "Just do whatever it takes to win." I was like, "Where was that oh, guy?" Yeah, <laughs> I needed that guy. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to have like done like because I never really did anything in my style. I uh, didn't really get to showcase my work. I don't have like all my Ink Master tattoos in my portfolio. I'm not super proud of all those. I did what I could under the circumstances I was in. Right. And those were the kind of tattoos I did. Right. Yeah, I feel like over time, I feel like a lot of those canvases ended up just being fans of the show. Mm-hmm. I would have been a nightmare. I would have been up there like, I want the craziest tattoo, blah, 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 blah. And then when it came time to sit down, I would have been like, yo, just do whatever you want. <laughs> like <laughs> psych out all the other artists. That's and then smart. just That's yeah. the best way to do it. That's how I would do it. Now, having you said you watched the whole episode, right? The whole season. The whole season? Yeah. Oh, watched college. a lot of seasons. Yeah. There's a lot of seasons. You watched season. my season? Yeah. So having yeah. watched the whole season, I mean, you have questions specifically? I was going to ask, like, what is, like, even though you exited towards pretty much the end of the season, like, what is that like, like, that process? Because I know, like, finale is pretty much, like, very soon after that, and I know they usually have all of you guys back for that. Like, how is that process, too? Oh, well, the finale is like, that was fun. It was like one big party in New York. Yeah. And, um, that that whole thing is live. So mm-hmm. it all had to be scripted, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Nothing was really ever scripted before that. And um, and they, they told me the lines. I didn't realize that the girl that was going to uh, come after me, that I got to say something to, actually had a final say, had a, had a new line. Like, they didn't tell me that, you know. She's like, I, got to, I beat you so many times, blah, blah, blah. Like, I would have had another comeback to say had I known she was going to say that. <laughs> um, or I would have talked about them all being sore losers. And, like, because we were, like, sitting in order. Of, mm-hmm. like Who gets uh, eliminated. Yeah, like, I'm sitting next to the fin- finalists and the other people on the other side. Um, but, it, you know, it was all fun. And uh, it's like we had a big party after. And I enjoyed it. It's cool. And it, was, it was great for my career. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Uh, like, I heard Tyler talking about the pay. And, you know, it's. We don't. We don't get paid. Uh, I think he said he was saying five hundred. Yeah. It was uh, less. So it was two fifty for yeah. me. Yeah. So that was the season before. So it's two fifty an episode. And um, but then when you compare the and yeah, and you lo- all the money that you lost all the all the three months of not tattooing or four mm-hmm. months, um, but how much of that value? Like if I I couldn't have had a better commercial for my personality on TV, you know, and a lot of people liked me. I think like the people who really listen to the judges are not gonna. Like me, like they're gonna be like, oh, yeah. Mark doesn't isn't a great tattoo artist. That's not the way that the, uh, the show is designed. The show wants you to like make up your own mind and and, and pick your favorites. And and so the people who who really liked me and, and, and liked my vibe, I was a lot of people, you know. Yeah. And like I, I hear it all the time. Like I liked you. You were so chill. You were great the way you handled stuff. You were you weren't you know. So those people were, were attracted to me, and then they did get tattooed by me. And, cool. Um, People were flying me out to their tattoo conventions, and it was a fun run, but it doesn't last long because then there's another season of Ink Master, and then you're old news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was the worst challenge for you? Like as soon as they said it, you're like, oh. Well, the one, the one I dreaded the most was, um, I knew it was coming, was, uh, was portraits. Yeah. I hadn't done a portrait uh, uh, for like 10 years at that point. Like, just put that, gave that up. I was like, pursued it for a little bit. Um like at that time, like I started seeing like 
once Nico Hurtado came out, I was like, well, <laughs> I think it's time to give up. Like, You're like, really, guys? Really? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, this he's taking the portraits to a, a level that I'll never get to. And, uh, you know, because I was trying black and gray portraits back in the day, and I still, I'm still still into it. I like it. And uh, so I went, I went to some friends, and I was like, well, the first thing I did was I told my wife, I was like, you're getting a portrait. Only, and I only had three days' notice before I was leaving. <laughs> like, not much time to practice anything. But at the time, you knew all the challenges that were going to happen? I figured from, there would be, uh, yeah, because there's always a portrait challenge. Yeah, every, every, every season. season that's yeah. Guaranteed. Uh, had I known, I would have really studied. Like, uh, uh, all the seasons are pretty similar. Like, I think if I would have studied more, I would have understood that, that there's, like, like, when we did butt cheeks, we were all surprised that we had to, we, we drew both butt cheeks, and then, like, once we did one, we had to switch. It's like, I should have seen mm. that one coming. Like, that yeah. happens every season. Yeah. And like, I wonder if the guys that were on the season before probably knew and didn't say, like, <laughs> no, nah, they were going to make a switch. Right. But, um, yeah, the portraits were, were making me nervous. So I did one on my wife. Then I went to H2 Ocean. We had, a like, a party. They had their, like, a big party, and so there's tons of portrait guys. They sponsor all the portrait guys. Yeah. I'm hanging out with Bob Terrell. I'm, like, asking him tips, and he's like, you're a good artist. You're gonna be fine. I'm like, that's not what I need to hear. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need real help here. Yeah. So one dude is like, I, I do black and gray portraits. Uh, I'm gonna have you tattoo me, and I'm gonna show you my method. And that was the first time I learned the pendulum swing and stuff. Yeah. And I'm still, you know, doing little circles in my portraits at that point. Or I wasn't really doing portraits, but ten years ago I was. And uh, so he taught me that. And um, so then when it came time for the portrait to happen, I actually I. W- Got to win the challenge before. I got to pick which portrait I wanted, which is a huge help. Yeah, yeah. So I got the, the uh, my fit. I got this uh, old school like lady face, of the, the guy's mom, and um, and I ended up winning. But the uh, and it was crazy because the, the, the mom is there that I'm doing the portrait on, and we're doing the kids, and I got to pick. Uh, first, the girl wanted it on her thigh. And she yeah, a cute girl on her thigh. Of course, like that's probably what most guys are gonna pick, right? And I picked her first, and I was like, you know what? I think portraits sit nicer. And the, the amount of time that we have, six hours, I, I think I do want this arm. Yeah. And I switched it to his arm. And he was kind of a nightmare. He was like, I'm just here because my sister wanted to come. And I partied all night, and I hadn't slept. And he was, like, sweating and passing out the whole time and sweating my stencil <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> and he was really, like, <laughs> one of the worst. Or they're all they're all pretty hard to work with. But um, and then they would send the mom out. And I'm like, how, how dumb do you have to be? And the mom would come mess with me. And she's like, my hair doesn't look like that. I'm like... Are you trying to make me mess up your son's portrait? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just because the producers told okay, you. Okay, I'll fuck it up. <laughs> you know, so. it's a graduation for you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was like a co- college graduation. It was a beautiful picture, ever. and um, yeah, and I ended up that was at the end, and ended up winning that, and that got me in like a. I was like, okay, maybe I can win this thing. Yeah, got yeah. Me going again, like I needed these little confidence boosts because it was just constantly everyone beat me down. It's nice to win, like, the one thing you were worried about, too. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah. I feel really good. Yeah, yeah. and the judge, judges gave me props. So, like, they, they don't care to see you do the stuff that you're good at. Like, right. Yeah. They want to see you do They the like stuff. the versatility. They mm-hmm. stress that super heavily. And that, that got – but it was only the next episode. That now I had three guest judges come out. I had Nico, um, Mike Rubendahl, and the other, some other girl from uh, England. And uh, it's just pretty spicy. <laughs> and uh, so now there's like more guest judges than there's artists left. There's there's the three of them, and then the other three. So there's six, and there's like four artists or five artists left. And uh, and that got pretty rough. Was it just getting ripped on by six people? <laughs> yeah. was, like, <laughs> like three's was, enough, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad that uh, I think um, uh, even Nico was uh, was like, "Ruben, all like, what's up? Why are you like going after Mark so hard?" And, I think he's like, well, I, you know, they, they want me to. I, I trained for this. You know, um, I think he even, like, said, like, uh, I'm not even having sex with my wife. It's like, I'm training, like, for a fight. Like, <laughs> like I'm taking him out. Like, the, like they, they told me to come after him. Like, this is all what I, uh, what I heard. But uh, so I don't know 100%. I, and I still love and respect. He's, like, some of my favorite tattooists mm-hmm. in the world, of course. But, um, like, when he came out, and he first saw me, I, like, stood up, and I took my glove off. I'm like, oh, it's good to see you, Mike. And I shook his hand. And then he had he was, like, full of, like, nice things to say. He was like, Mark Longnecker, I uh, remember your name from my beginning part of my career. And it was a, it was a name being tossed around, and I always uh, liked and respected you. 
I'm like, whoa, this dude just built me up. Yeah. There was a method that was so that he could build tear <laughs> me down. <laughs> yeah. In the in the in the critique and kind of like catch you off guard when it comes to that. Yeah. Time. yeah. So then it came time for the critique and it was the, the harshest critique ever. And I think that he probably got some inside stuff like um, maybe from the that psychologist in the control yeah. room. It's like, well, he's um, he's really hard to to make snap, but he's very passionate about his work. So maybe if we like we question his passion you know if we start to um say that he's a has-been and we start to do all this th- th- that's the way we're going to make him snap and uh and and so he does he starts digging in he's like um you know i look at this tattoo and i just feel like you lost your love for tattooing and and uh and you lost your passion and you know and i do used to look up to you but i surpassed you and yeah, you, know, you plateaued long years ago, yeah. and I was like, it was like low blow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I said talk that. about like any artist like integrity with their art. It's uh-huh. low blow. And I was like, are you gonna critique like my lines or anything about this tattoo? Yeah. Or are you gonna keep attacking my character? You know, like I'm getting like my adrenaline's going. I took my glasses off. Oh, you said that? Yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 At least I fucked my wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my tattoo's over here. Yeah. So. <laughs> when you're ready to look at it, let me know. So he um yeah yeah so th- th- but th- I said that, but of course they wouldn't air that. Because that's gonna yeah. make me look too good and make him look bad. Right. Uh, but they did err when I finally I said um, I'd rather you. So talk about low blow. I was like, I'd rather you come down here and kick me in the balls than say me the stuff that you're saying. And they're like, they like that because that's talking about me, right. not talking about him. So they aired that, and um, I said uh, there's like a, there's quite a, a battle going on. And he got me really really fired up, and I was like literally ready. I said these are fighting words. What you're saying, like yeah. if, we were, if we were in a tattoo convention and you came and said that all these things that you're saying right now, we would we would fight. If we were at a bar, you would fight. But now you're in your comfy judge stand, and I'm down here being judged, and that cameras are rolling. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's like we are we are equals really. All you guys, Nunez, Oliver, you, we've all been tattooing close to the same amount of time. Uh, and the, any other cir- circumstance where you're equals, but now you're you're my judge. This is crazy, but um, yeah, he got, he got me super fired up, and uh, and uh, and the, they loved it. <laughs> that, that, cause that was like my they were trying to make me break. Yeah, I feel like they wanted me to go up and fight fight the, the judges. Yeah. Which that, w- that would have been sick. Yeah. <laughs> what well, do you have to say? Well, I'll fucking it, kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't happen with me, but it happened the season before. Yeah. I don't know if you know about all that. Well, Kyle Dunbar. Kyle Dunbar yeah. and Chris went at yeah. it. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. They, they pushed him, him to the edge. So the, he's got a he's got a, a sharp, much sharper temper than they me. They knew right. that they could fucking yeah. push him around. And he just ran up so and fucking. Funny, the funny thing is, me and Kyle was actually guest spotting at my shop while this one was airing. So we yeah. watched it live together. <laughs> 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 and he's like, bro, they're, 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 you're me in this season. They're like, they're coming after you. you yeah. know? I know what you're go- going through. And he's like so mad. He's talking shit on Twitter and stuff to the judges and stuff, and which they want, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it was, that, was, that was a pretty hectic time. And, but then, of course, like uh, then Mike came and shook my hand after. And, and I was like, well, we didn't show you that part on TV. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, Comes nope. Up. He's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the Nunez fight was probably staged. No, that's all no. real. No, I yeah. feel like like based that's off cool. of Kyle's personality, like yeah, that was that was, was well, coming. Well, well, I just want to say it was definitely like, it was definitely provoked, <laughs> right? but yeah, yeah, it was. They wouldn't kick him off if it was staged. Why would you agree to that? You know? Yeah. <laughs> to lose I I figured that one was real, like based off of Chris's reaction during mm-hmm. that, because Chris was like, "His Miami came out." <laughs> yeah, he was like, he was like shocked, like he didn't expect Kyle to come out of like that. Face. But he didn't really, he didn't back down either. No, you know? yeah, and he's from he, Miami. Yeah, he's and, and then he tried to squash it outside. They mm-hmm. showed that, and so he went for it again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they went out. Of <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> because we're not gonna fight. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> And they, that, uh, what you don't see is, um, I think there there were actual punches thrown, and uh, yeah, they don't show any they don't of show, that. I think he, I think Chris may even got clipped and stuff. And yeah, because I remember that vividly that scene, like the beginning of that season when they're in the prison or jail, mm-hmm. and That's Kyle and that dude go back and forth in the <laughs> cell. <laughs> that dude's like, "You're in my cell." He's like, "I don't give a fuck." <laughs> I was like, "Yo, this dude's <laughs> this dude's coming for the heat this season." Give me your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> No, honestly, I think it's kind of that ship has sailed. It's Definitely like different. The, the, now. Uh, the caliber is so much. Like, the, have you watched the new season at all? I didn't see the newest one. I know there. Are, it's like that was all sick artists. And yeah, stuff. it's like the caliber is just like. It's but crazy, I don't, I don't know how much that does for your career anymore. Yeah. Either I feel like like it was only established artists on it already. 
So it's like I definitely think it's changed I now. Feel like the new thing is the, is the Johns. Yeah. TikTok's Tick killing uh, it right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. TikTok yeah. row is more important than Ink Master yeah. Row and the tattoo convention right now. <laughs> yeah. Definitely making more than two fifty a week too. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube bro. Good one, Cam. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like I make nothing. <laughs> yeah, they've done a lot of seasons. A lot of people have been on. I'm sure there's like still fans of the show. That that was gonna be my question though. Like you think it's worth it. You're happy you did it. Of course. It sounds like, you know, you said it impacted the career, which is great. I'm sure yeah, people recognize you from the show. It's easy to talk bad show. about the terrible experience we went through, but, you know, overall, it was, uh, like, I even heard when they had t- when you were talking to Tyler, it's like, yeah, it was, like, yeah, it was he had, eventually he just said it was, it was good for him and his career. And, yeah. But it's like, of course we want to bitch about what we went through, because right. it was like hell, you know, we went through war. Right. I feel yeah. like, I really feel bonded with the people on my season, like we're war buddies. You know? Yeah. What do you, it could be mildly compared to an apprenticeship. Like, apprenticeships suck. Yeah, you but know, that end goal. But they give I, you I would a almost career. compare it to like going into the military, like beat you down to nothing, right. and then bring you back up again. Like it feels like boot camp kind of stuff, you know. I could relate it to like therapeutic rehabs I was in. <laughs> 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 yeah, but when you go through like tough times like that, you get close to the people you're in there with, mm-hmm. you know, because they understand. They went through it together. You could talk about it. Um, Some of those critiques are still in my mind when I'm doing the when I'm pulling a line. Like, yeah, I feel like Oliver's over my shoulder with his toothpick poking me in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, What'd you work on? <laughs> yeah, make sure that line connects. Don't, yeah. don't come back to it later. Yeah, make Dude, sure he's sh- actually my favorite part of that fight with Nunez. He's on the side like, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, like this is rad. <laughs> oh man! And then one thing I wanted to talk about with you because you talked about like on the shop being critiqued and the word plateau came up. And I feel like that's something that as time goes on, I'm always battling. Like, don't stay stagnant. Keep yeah, Stay so, inspired. So your whole career, like right, you, right now, Cam is, is trying to become rev- relevant, right? Yeah. And uh, so you're building up, I want to be relevant, I want to be relevant. And then you, if you become something, there's always the people behind you, right? And yeah. It's like, so it never stops. And then, and then, so then you just, now you're chasing like, I want to stay relevant. And then it's like, uh, but all these new things are happening in the industry. The industry's moving like a freight train, right? It's not slowing down. So it's like, if you if you say I don't want to use the iPad or I don't want to use these dildo machines, right? You know, then okay, now you're starting to, to go back down, right? Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. or you or you keep going with it. I don't want to be on Ink Master. That's blah blah. blah. So it's, yeah, you, you either evolve or you get left behind. And I'm definitely don't want to be one of those dudes. Yeah. Because it can happen. Like, sometimes, like, I'll get stagnant, and I'm like, oh, okay, I got to get back up, and then I get stagnant. It's like a constant battle. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's how it is for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then what are you doing today or now to not let that happen? I just try to I, – I definitely, like – I try to keep up with everything. Yeah. Like, I want to know what's 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 cool and what's hip and what's winning the contest and, and what's getting all the likes. Like, as much as you say, I don't, I don't care about the likes or I don't care about – Who's being shared on this page? Like you kind of have to if you want to stay relevant, right? Right. It's part of the job now. Yeah, it's so important. You know, you know, a big part of me says, "Well, if I just keep focusing on what I'm doing, then pe- and people will like it, and then maybe some, maybe my shit will be cool again." Or you know, it doesn't always work like that. Maybe maybe I can incorporate the shit that's cool over here into my tattoo. Right. right. Maybe I should do that sparkle technique. Maybe I should do a little sticker peel over here or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You have to keep keep up with like what everyone's feeling, and I feel like you have to stay open minded, right? Mm-hmm. We're definitely and in like the trendy times right now. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's and important it sucks because I've seen like a lot of old my old head friends or like uh, people that were you know senior when I was starting fall behind because yeah. they stayed closed minded. They weren't about it. So I was thinking about that. So you said you st- you were at Silver on the Mount. Yeah. So I remember that booth, like, I remember the old Fort Lauderdale tattoo conventions, right? Yeah. Those were, like, so so much fun and crazy, like, biker days, and it was a whole different time. And I remember that booth being there. Yeah. I don't know if you were an apprentice in that booth back in those days or whatever. Do you remember me from back in the old days? At was the, it at a convention? Fort Lauderdale convention, yeah. No, I don't. Florida? No, I definitely was not allowed to go to a convention at that <laughs> time. <laughs> I was probably in the shop dressed as an elf or something, <laughs> you know, being abused. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, so I think about, like, all, all those people from the for- old South Florida show, I don't see, 
95 percent of those people anymore yeah, yeah. all the people that were like fun and big names and and winning contests like the, the whole convention scene just changes every like five years like the, all the hot new hip kids or the crew that's winning all the contests or this or the fun crew that's at the bar like that changes and evolves and um so do, do you remember that i used to uh, or ever hear about that i used to make uh margaritas at the tattoo conventions I used to make long neck aritas. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn. No, I would have re- remembered that. Yeah. yeah. So that. So well, you probably would have stayed away from it because you're sober. But This is a yeah, reputation maybe. that I built for myself that I, I, I look back at these days and I'm like, hmm, if I could change, like I kind of would rather have been remembered for, uh, for sick ass tattoos. Than, <laughs> than at least you remember. <laughs> than being the party guy. Yeah. But, you know, it definitely, it, like, I never had a problem uh, get, getting people to. Uh, remember me or to get my name out there to do the shirts or the stickers like I was giving well, my first few conventions I was giving away Jägermeister bottles with my card on it nice. and I was like you want a card and I'm like yeah I'll take three cards yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my wife wants a card too yeah <laughs> and they're the little the little mini ones and mm-hmm. people still have them and they're like I got it at my station it's so cool that was so, that was genius you know nobody cares about Jägermeister anymore but that was like the hottest yeah. thing like like those that 30 years ago or whatever or 25 years ago and uh so I'm always being creative. And, uh, that was another thing that my friend who taught me a lot about Japanese tattoos, one, one thing he hit me with that really sunk in and hit me hard was, he's like, you got everyone's attention, now you got to show them something, all right? Yeah. yeah. So that's like, okay, I need to like, I need to do sick tattoos more than I need to get people to remember my name. Right. And it's like that's, that's the balance that, that I have to always uh, mess with. And the other people, but then there's all the people doing sick tattoos that aren't good at promoting themselves. You right. Know? And, yeah. And, like uh, when you stumble across that person on Instagram and you're like, the, this is amazing. He's got why like 3, why have I never heard about this person? Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's going to always be those people. And they, they, they kind of need like an agent or, or a, a boss that works for them as an agent that helps promote them and get yeah. them the clients and stuff. And because they're so focused on their creativity and their artwork, they're not really focused. But there, there's creativity in in making a, a TikTok, right? Yeah, you can uh, like uh, you want to fight that, you want to hate on it, you want to uh, be like, oh, I'm, I'm a tattoo artist. Why do I got to make this real now? Like, this is your chance to make your own commercial about yeah. yourself, like, dude. We uh, hate on it the most, right? Like we do them, and we and it's part of the game. It's, it's yeah. creativity. Yeah, like I loved I loved when I was in art school and I got to mess with cameras and edit. Like that was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? I enjoy taking pictures of my tattoos and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just another part of the process. It you is. Know? Yeah, right. And you can like lean into it and work with it, or you can fight it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And there's definitely been times like where you know I fought I fought the iPad when it came out. I was like, I don't want to fucking use that thing. I'm not like a digital creator. I'm not a d- digital designer. I didn't fight like, the iPad because I came from like, right, 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 right. I think honestly, that's the best thing that's happened to tattooing. Yeah, better than, the, better than the machines. It makes the cleanest stencils. I, you know, because I, I before the iPad, I was like, I'm a, I'm a freehand guy. I'm going to focus on that. Yeah, and I was like, whoa, look at the stencil you can make on this iPad. It's way better than any Sharpie or Micron marker stencil that you made on your tracing paper. Right? Yeah, great. Print it out three times. Yeah, <laughs> you fuck it up. <laughs> no, but it was like each you know thing along the way, and going back to what we were saying about not plateauing, like when these things are introduced, trying to be open-minded to it, trying to, like, practice it. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be the iPad. It could be rotary machines, pen style. It could be social media advertising. It could be AI, like, whatever it is. Like, all right, let me try this. Let me see if it works, you okay. know, rather than, no, I'm going to fight it, and then that's the thing that hits, and now you're behind everyone. Because mm-hmm. I fought the iPad, and then, like, everyone at the shop was using the iPad, you know, and I didn't know how to use it. And I was like, fine, I'll use a fucking iPad. And then these, like, junior artists, maybe compared to me, are advancing extremely. And I'm still trying to figure out how to create a new layer (laughs) and procreate or whatever. (laughs) Something I find myself fighting with now is uh, anime, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm not an anime guy. I don't watch the anime. And if that's what's the hottest thing, and there's anime conventions and, Mm -hmm. and like, uh, and, like, people are just blowing up doing anime tattoos it's like, all right, so um, do I need to step back and be like, this isn't me. It's not going to be my authentic self if I, if I do something that's not me. But it, is it not me? The guy who focused the majority of his career on learning Japanese and has such a love for Japanese tattoos, 
Anime is pretty much Japanese. <laughs> it kind of yeah. uh, is me. It's just like I need to just take that one more step and and delve into watching the movies because I don't want to draw it if I don't know it and I haven't watched the movie. So, uh, like, that's another step that I, I probably should take, you know. Maybe we'll see some trappy anime, dude. <laughs> <Exactly. Sheesh. Yeah. laughs> Trap <laughs> Um As I'm doing my homework, I had to, I followed Cam and I was like, oh, shit, it's pretty good. And then um, I liked a few photos and now he's in my feed and, and then I'm scrolling, and now I'm at the point where no, if I see something I like, I just I screenshot it, and I always like tell myself, well, maybe I'll make a file of these for inspire me one day. Yeah. And I actually screenshotted it, and then I looked at the name, and I was like, oh, shit, it's Cam. Oh, Damn. Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. It was the skull. Oh, we'll we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, which one was it? The skull you just did with the flower coming yeah. out. I like to do those like decrepit roses, uh-huh. and, like, little skulls. Yeah, they're fun. Rose, yeah, like the shading was on point. I appreciate that, man. Thank uh, you. I think I was get, I was getting ready to. The, because I also send stuff off my screenshot that I like. I'll, I'll send it into different groups. Like, I have a group for my apprentices. Like, look at this one, you know? And I was like, wow, I just took a picture of a... And I don't really consider you an apprentice anymore, honestly. How, like how long have you been tattooing? About a uh, year and a couple months. Okay. So, I guess you are, but... <laughs> 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 but the t- quality of work you're doing. And I, and I like the fact that you still claim that you're an apprentice uh, under him. And I think that's a great honor. Forever an apprentice. Yeah. And um, but also like when I introduce uh, my apprentice who's been tattooing a year now, I was like, I don't want to keep calling him apprentice, and making people nervous. So I say he's a junior tattooer, like yeah, uh, kind of a, a upgraded First his name, tattoo, yeah. yeah. And uh, but yeah, you are you are an apprentice, and it's an honor to be John's apprentice. And yeah, and you're is. killing it. Very lucky, and yeah. I appreciate it, man. Wow, this shirt is actually really nice. If you haven't already, you need to check out themodelcitizenapparel.com. It has the best tattoo clothing I've ever seen. And I'm quite a critic when it comes to fashion, clothing, whatever. The design has to be cool and the material has to be comfortable, at least form fitting. They have a range of styles from vintage to modern. They're continuing to work with new artists featuring new designs and articles of clothing. You need to check out this company, themodelcitizenapparel.com, or you can check out their social media, which is Model Citizen Apparel. It's the best. So back in the day, you want to get in the magazines, right? I heard yeah. you guys talk about yeah. that before. Mm-hmm. This was this was the, the, the Instagram before. Uh, that was like the you made it, like back in the day. Well, this one I'm not proud of. I brought, <laughs> I brought the stuff that took, uh, makes fun of me, really. <laughs> So I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to get in magazines at this point. Right? I'm trying to get a, a magazine spread. This doesn't count. What year is this? This is like, uh, I don't know. It's over over 20 years ago. <sighs> maybe 25, 30. Like I started 30 years ago, and I started probably trying to get in magazines about a good five years after that. But um, <coughs> So this is um, Tattoos for Men. Uh, so... Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to get my stuff in magazines, but the people, the photographers are taking pictures of me and asking them to take pictures of me at tattoo conventions. So I'm like, well, here's a start, right? Yeah. But um, I had a few pictures that I didn't like. Like, uh, I remember I just got a piece underneath my belly button, and the, I pulled my pants down to show it, and I thought they were taking a picture of the piece, and it was a whole picture of me kind of pulling my pants down. <laughs> and I was like, well, that looked ridiculous. And I was like a full page. And then... Uh, <laughs> Then another one, I got my arms done, and I held my arms together, and it, it kind of looked like this, like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought they were taking a picture of the tattoo. So it's like, I'm not letting anyone else take pictures of me. This is getting ridiculous. I'm just going to wait till I can get my, my tattoos in there. And But you feel like you want to also show the people who are doing the tattoos, and tattoos on you, and you want to get their stuff in magazines. So this one photographer, she kept hitting me up. She's like, oh, Mark, you got a lot more tattoos since I've seen you. I want to get a photo of you. I'm like, no, I'm not going in your studio. Uh, but... You know, take a picture of me randomly. If you take a picture of me tattooing or take a picture of me hanging out with the boys at the bar, like, that's fine. And uh, and then she catches me at the bar. And <laughs> she's like, I was like, yeah, just take some random shots. I don't want to pose. I don't want to, like, just get some uh, some candid, c- candids. And uh, she's taking some. She's like, I really want to get you in the studio. And um, I want to get your shirt off. And I was like, kind of drunk. I was like, I'll get your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> and she's like, uh, offer accepted. And she had like big fakies and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and she took me in there and, and th- this is the photo shoot that happened. And um, so I remember she put me in this pose, right? <laughs> and, uh, 
She's like, I like making triangles in my in my art. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, this feels a little I don't yeah. know about this. <laughs> and so then of course it becomes the, the cover of the magazine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. And uh, yeah. yeah. So um I, I immediately my friends started like making fun of me when they were buying them and and uh and uh, so I immediately ran to the store here that sells all the tattoo magazines, and I bought them all. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she's like, oh, you're proud. You want to send them to your friends? I was like, I don't want anyone to see these. Yeah. <laughs> and then I also had the, uh, had the centerfold. Nice. Yeah. That's a good cool yeah. one. They did, they did you good with that patch. one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, there, I was like one of the first people sponsored by Fusion. We were doing nice. Fusion ads and stuff. Yeah, if I had saw that picture, I don't think I would have asked what year. I think I know now. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so sticky? So you, you see, I was, I was promoting a different look back, back yeah, in those, yeah. th- those days. But it's just funny to see, like, so back, I would, like, actually uh, um, put my, uh, categorize all my tattoos back in the day. So, I, like, tr- that's cool. But, when they're, you know, I was, like, doing new school tattoos when it was new school, the first time new school hit, you know? Yeah. That's actually what I started tattooing. Fairies and stuff, sunshine and dragons. Yeah, <laughs> oh. no, you got a wizard in there. Yeah, we were talking about <laughs> the wizards. Dude. Where's that wizard? Thank you for coming out and joining us, man. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much, dude. Thank you dude. guys, sick. Great to be here. Great to be back in Fort Lauderdale, my old stomping grounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, I, thought you I thought you were gonna say something and then you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us on this episode of Unemployable Podcast, and we'll catch you next week. Cool, man. We're all set. Cool. What after we using? Sanoderm. That's awesome. I hear that heals everything. John, can Sanoderm heal the ugly on my face? Are you f-ing serious?